Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to Wisconsin Foodie Live. I am surprised to be here with my uh, my my good buddy Luke Zom. It's been uh, it's been a great couple of days. Um, you know, we had the uh, you know I had the I had the good fortunes of being able to do uh, we had a Wisconsin Foodie retreat out in Viroqua. So um, the last couple of days, Luke and I have been together um, with with the rest uh, with the majority of the team of, of Wisconsin Foodie. Minus one of our our dearest and closest collaborators, uh, Nelson. Uh, Nelson is uh, you know I have to you know Luke. I'm sorry before you know we get into it. I, I really have to say, you know, last week on on the show I talked about we were talking uh, the Oneida, you know, and we were talking about an edit, and uh, you know, and behind the scenes Nelson, you know, and I were talking, and or I, or I said online that uh, oh yeah that that part wasn't in there because you know probably because the editor Nelson. And, you know, I was making a joke, but uh, but, you know, that was wrong because Nelson is one of the most important people that we have in Wisconsin Foodie. Um, Nelson is is an editor, but uh, he's so much more. He's been with Wisconsin Foodie for is, you know, the second longest tenure of Wisconsin Foodie members. He is everything that you love and appreciate about the show. That isn't Luke um, is, is mainly Nelson. So Nelson is uh, <laughs> Nelson is 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 one of the most important important people and we love them and it's never nelson's fault you know nelson it's never his fault he is uh <laughs> he's, loved, he's loved and cherished and uh you know i say this while he's probably very very hard at work uh on on one of the one of the last second to last uh, edits of wisconsin foodie episodes of this of this season so nelson we love you we thank you we missed you all weekend in viroqua but uh we are planning um pretty amazing things for the future. And uh, you are going to be included in all that amazingness. Right, Luke? That's right, man. Uh, teamwork makes the dream work. And I think that it's really important, you know, sometimes in an organization to like, just be accountable for when things like happen. And, you know, obviously, Nelson, uh, if you're watching this now, I want you to hear that you are loved and so appreciated. And uh, for those of you at home, who, you know, don't necessarily know all the the uh, juicy bits, about making a TV show work, it takes a tremendous amount of time and energy and effort on multiple people um, to make this thing kind of come together. So for all of you who are affiliated with PBS Wisconsin, for all of you who are affiliated with any of our underwriters, any of you who are affiliated with, you know, the, the guests, I mean, like the subjects, it takes a lot of work on their part to like show up for these live streams to allow us to come into their lives and just kind of like bombard them with cameras for a few days or, you know, sometimes even a few hours, but like that takes an emotional toll. So mm -hmm. Nelson, Dan, uh, Arthur, uh, you know, the folks that, uh, you know, are really easy to, to pass over Gary Denny, uh, the good people at PBS Wisconsin. Uh, we really, really, really appreciate your support and all the hard work you put in. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely what makes this dream work. You know, Wisconsin Foodie is is a very very small core team. There's there's basically about four of us that do everything, and uh, and I don't want to disparage a lot of the people that work with us and a lot of our partners and a lot of our contractors. I mean, it's a, it's just a fantastic group of humans that we work with, and um, and and I think that the intimacy of our group and the size of our group really really helps us tell the stories. It helps us get get into a location and make people feel comfortable and our camaraderie. Um, it, it's something that that can't be, you know, maybe you can see it on TV. Maybe it makes it, it's it's why you like watching Wisconsin foodies. You just like that vibe. But really, that vibe comes from behind the scenes of all of us working together um, behind the camera and and in, you know, uh, in the edit rooms to make these uh, stories come to life. And um, and I think this year, Luke, we've, we've had some really, really incredible stories. Um, part of this weekend, we spent time up, you know, at, at Luke's house. Luke has a, one of the most amazing pieces of property in the world. It's, it's, um, you know, it, it's really refreshing for somebody like me coming from the city to spend time out there. Um, I was able to bring the dog. We had a pack of dogs that just roamed the forest and uh, spent a lot of time just uh, brain, brainstorming and uh, coming up with, with really fantastic ideas for this upcoming season. We're really excited about it, and we'd like to really we'd like to try to incorporate you as much as possible. Um, you know, we love hearing from you. Uh, this is the time where we want to hear ideas. You know, we want to hear people. If you've got something that you want to pitch to us or present to us, um, please feel free to drop it in the comments to to send us emails. 
I think Luke and I are actually going to try to, we, one of the things we discussed is doing a pitch show and, and like where we could do something like this and invite people to come on and, and pitch their ideas. So um, we'll have to flush that out at some point here. Once, once we finish up editing the whole season, we can start on the new stuff like that. But, um, you know, I mean, if you guys want to see this kind of podcast, uh, keep going after the show airs, um, after the season airs, let us know, because this could be fun. I mean, Luke, you seem to be in a different location every time we do this. Um, I am. I move and shake a lot. (laughs) In all honesty, I just got out of the car from a three and a half hour drive from Viroqua to Shorewood, Wisconsin, to set up my computer to turn, you know, to press the power button, to turn this, the the app on, just to pop on here. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's been a lot of fun. So, um. And I, st- I got to stop at a quick trip, which is always uh, a pleasure. You know, I mean, they, they got the snacks, they got the good hot water for tea. Um, well, we should, you know, they also have, uh, they don't have as good as coffee as Ruby coffee though. Ruby coffee's got, you know, I don't think they carry Ruby coffee and that's one of the biggest knocks, I think, on a <laughs> quick trip. You know, because Ruby coffee is some of, you know, obviously the best, the best in the world. It's, it's like some of the best coffee out there and it's in like the smallest little town. And I, and that is like the coolest thing for me, you know? So if you're pitching yeah. shows, you know, you got to find the, the, the best coolest little thing in the smallest little town and, and we'll be there because those are, those are always incredible stories. We always love promoting those types of people. And, um, with further ado, we should uh, invite Mr. Jared Linsmeyer to the show. Jared, welcome to Wisconsin Foodie Live. Hey guys, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. I figured it out. Good. I like That's that hoodie. Hoodie. That's a cool hoodie. You guys got some really cool swag. Oh, this? Yeah. Yeah, that thing. Oh, is this? That, yeah. <laughs> wow. What do you know? <laughs> Go figure. Is that a oh, salmon color? Is that a salmon color shirt? Yeah, and it's a skier. Ooh, I like it. A little cross country ski scene. That's one of my uh, favorite favorite yeah. hobbies. So, hey, thanks guys. Thank you for having me, and thanks for the um, beautiful episode yesterday. That was a real treat to watch. We were we, um, we had a small uh, watch party at our cafe in Stevens Point, so a bunch of our staff was there, and it was just um, it was just wonderful. It was fantastic. I. I I wrote up a little piece um, that went out in our newsletter too, where I said something about what the show means to me. And I think that um, it's just like, it's worth mentioning again, just how I, I'm a big fan and I know what the tradition of the show means. And I feel like the show has such a huge importance for me as an individual, but also for, I think a lot of people around, not just Wisconsin, but people that have spent time here, people that have family here. And um, for me personally, when I was living in the Northwest, being from here, it was really inspiring to see, to have this insight into, um, you know, both traditional and historical Wisconsin food culture and, and beverage culture, and also, you know, new and exciting things that are happening. So to be part of it is really a dream come true, honestly. So thank you. No, oh, man, that's great. That's so, that's. Uh, that makes me a little emotional, man, to hear all that. Thank you. I'm I'm glad it's on record here because uh, can we use that somewhere uh, for promotional material? <laughs> Please do. It's the truth. It's really you the look, truth. I mean, you're looking for a part-time sales job because we need somebody <laughs> like you. Let's go. I've got all the time in the world. You know, it's not like I'm running a business or anything. <laughs> yeah. So Let's talk to it. us. What's going on with Ruby, man? So how's uh, how's the cafe been doing since we we last saw each other? Because it, it's been. I think last summer, or maybe early or late spring around that time, that's when we were in. So, I mean, it's almost been a year now. So tell us, tell yeah. us what's going on. You got a beard. That's pretty sweet. Oh, thanks. Like beard. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. The beard's looking good. I have a hat. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm tell a us. Dad. So, I'm a well, dad again. Anything new, anything exciting? Um, and it doesn't even need to be new and exciting. I mean, what's going on? Life is great. I mean, you know, life is challenging. Obviously there's a lot of, you know, crazy stuff happening in the world, but thankfully, Ruby's going great. Um, You know, we we sort of take the approach that, um, I don't know, we just want to make make whatever we can do whatever we can to make our experience to make the guest experience at the cafe just like positive and um, collaborative with the people we work with. And so the cafe has been going really great. We have a lot of new menu items since you guys were in last. So um, the kitchen team has been 
been putting together some really fun and exciting things like breakfast tacos are on the menu right now. Um, we won or we were acknowledged, I guess it's not really a, a, a win, but we were acknowledged as the best cafe in Wisconsin by Food and Wine magazine. What? Um, wow. Yeah. Man, that's incredible. That's a, that's, a, that's a huge accolade. Yeah. Yeah. And that means, you know, that stuff means a lot to me, but really I just love what it does for the community. And I love um, seeing what it means to the team because I think it really, um, it, just, it just makes them really proud of, um, of their work as they should be. And it, you know, a lot of people, it got posted to like a Facebook page in our area, you know, Stevens Point happening. And a lot of people I saw on the page were like, what, you know, had never heard of us before, but they saw this article <laughs> and it's great. So it's like just super validating when you have a publication like that. I mean, it means so much. Um, and not to mention, no, we have some really great cafes here in Wisconsin. Like, I mean, we, we have some of the best. I, I've, we've, we've done our fair amount of travel and and I have to say that the coffee shops and the cafe scene in, in Wisconsin, the Milwaukee, Madison area, and even even in, you know, obviously your area, uh, Stevens Point in, in Barocco with the Wonder State, there are some interesting cafes. There's some really beautiful spaces and, and smart cafes all over Wisconsin. I think that they um, they push each other a little bit, right? You guys are all super, you know, slightly competitive and, and we've got like the, the most brilliant coffee mines, I think, in the country here in in Wisconsin. And, and um, I, that's a lot of credit to you guys. I mean, because that's, um, you know, we, we love coffee. And, and that's another reason to, to live here in Wisconsin, right? Is like, if you like coffee, we got the best of the best here. One of, one of the things they called out specifically is um, the fact that we, we are currently able to use beef from my uncle. So, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like that's a very Wisconsin yeah, and well, unusual. You know? When are you going to start rubbing that in coffee beans? And like, uh, are you going to do uh, some beef rubbed? Uh, is that, is that beef? You got to come to my house for that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't like that. That's not something you like, Luke, is you're not going to do the coffee bean um, or coffee ground coffee on a beef, uh, maybe. Brisket. Yeah. 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 No, I, I've, I've coffee rubbed. Uh, I've coffee rubbed duck. I've coffee rubbed chicken. I've coffee rubbed beef. I have. Uh, but I don't know about like rubbing the beans in and then making a, a delicious uh, cup of coffee because I think oh, that that's, no, that's the thing. Where I was going with this. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, Ruby Coffee doesn't need any help. As, as cool as it is that, uh, you know, you're sourcing food from uh, local purveyors in the, in the cafe. Um, man, oh, man, Jared, you guys are I, – and I think you kind of said it. You, you said it super eloquently in the episode. Um, so for anyone who didn't catch it, you know, Jared said like, he's not chasing like the, the new or the exotic flavors or like, you know, the flavors du jour of, of the coffee world. You're looking for good, clean, uh, consistent flavors. And actually that's what turns me on to Ruby coffee so much is it's one of those cups that I can brew and I can brew it consistently. And, uh, you know, I am not a scientist when it comes to coffee. I really am not. And as a matter of fact, uh, I don't, I don't want to say that I resent that. But, like, with some roasteries, like, I feel like I don't possess the patience, number one, or the technical knowledge to make a cup of coffee where the story of the producer and the notes of the coffee bean really carry through. Uh, I prefer to uh, refer to myself as, like, a power drinker. Uh, but I can taste and appreciate really fantastic coffee. And uh, that aguacate, I'm going to say it again over and over and over. Um, you know, for somebody who drinks a lot of coffee, those clean, clean Colombian flavors or like, you know, Central American flavors for me, uh, they hit all the points. Uh, that's consistent it's smooth it's not overly processed you don't get that like over roasted taste you don't get a lot of the like light herbal uh tea notes that sometimes you get with like the, the east african coffees it's just a rock solid cup of coffee absolutely uh, my question is why wisconsin like you know intelligentsia that's la based you, you obviously you've got like the big players like starbucks which is seattle based but why do we have such an amazing conglomerate of coffee roasters here in the Midwest? Oh, that's a good question. But, um, well, before I get to that, let me just mention, I don't remember if I mentioned to you that I've been to visit those farmers in Aguacate as well. So 
that's another. I think, so. I think maybe some of that was on the show. I mean, obviously, like that whole cupping scene was, yeah. was. I mean, that what we there was actually like five or six cups, cu like uh, cups cupped, tasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> from, from all around. And one amazing thing is that we actually have like we just launched um, the guacharos again, and um, we have aguacate, and I think people might not realize how like fortunate that timing is because the way that sourcing works, it's a very seasonal thing. And so those coffees aren't on our menu year round. I mean, um, certain coffees I try to stretch as much as we can, but um, the reality is in the summer months, we pivot most of our focus more to Central America, Northern hemisphere. And so it's just like perfect timing that we have both aguacate oh, wow. and aros um it's actually pretty unusual like if you guys had aired this uh episode at slightly different timing that may not have been the case um but to your question about wisconsin i don't know i think you know um the fact is like great coffee now great like you know sourcing and roasting when i think of great coffee obviously what we're talking about first and foremost is high quality raw product so that has been generally available for a pretty long time. But in terms of sourcing and roasting, you know, I think it's just things come in waves. It's kind of the same with culture and breweries and craft beer. It's just things take time. And now it's a little bit uh, everywhere. So uh, thankfully, like a lot of people have an opportunity to have roasters near them that are doing a pretty good job. Um, you know, for me personally, it was really just about being able to be uncompromising with the vision so that you know when we started i was in a garage you know in my garage in my house and i was you know and still now um we've built this this brand really around this is what we do this is why we do it and um you know i'm not like my overhead especially in the beginning was low so that was a real priority for me so that i i didn't have to um i was desperate for growing, you know, everybody in the beginning, when you're growing a business, it's hard and you do what you have to do to, um, to make things happen. And, and that's, that's, you know, that's a, that's an interesting phase, but I didn't have to compromise on my vision. So for me, that was, that was kind of the, one of the appeals to being in a place that I also, you know, know and love and just like, it's, you know, my soul is kind of Wisconsin. So yeah, that's <laughs> a lot of things. I mean, I think we share that same philosophy as, as we just, um, we don't compromise, you know, we have, uh, we, we have a vision and we continuously tweak that vision and we continuously work to the vision. You know, it's funny, I think when we started foodies, you know, a long time ago, uh, we, we had a vision, we had a goal, but after the year, after all these years, I still feel like I haven't reached that. And I'm, I haven't even come close to that. And every year I'm still working to, to reach that vision or the goal that I once had or that I had. And and every year we're not quite there. And every year we tweak a little bit and we try a little bit, but I think for everybody at home, it's it, the product seems so consistent maybe, or or it, it, people love something about what we do, but um, but behind the scenes, we're constantly trying to like fulfill this goal or this vision that we have. And it's never truly just right, but we have that kind of, that moral compass with the company that we we go down. So that that's awesome, man. I think that's, that's what we needed. Have you learned to um, embrace that, that process as as the goal it's actually more more called chaos and not so much process it's just that we can solve it for chaos um you know yes I, I think we've gotten to a point where you know like i said before the team is 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 fantastic we work with some of the best people in the business um you know there, there's a lot of chaos um and uh, but at the same time we you know we've learned to like harness that and work with that and you know, and I think as we kind of as we kind of learn our lessons from the past, we try to tweak and we try to do things a little bit better. But maybe some of that chaos is what makes makes you know makes it good to to certain people. So, so what are you chasing? Like telling telling stories, telling the stories more effectively. I'm curious about this. I think you know yeah. from from a, from a you know I think I I look at it as a, from a storytelling perspective. A, filmmaking perspective um i mainly it mainly comes to the structure of how the the video comes together so mm -hmm. the shot selection the different variety of shots um you know when we first started the show we had this like a strict code and we put ourselves in this box and we didn't we didn't want to use natural we only we only wanted to use natural lighting for the show 
and we never wanted to do sit down interviews. Um, it was always interviews in the moment, like while people were doing things. Uh, we we never would use lights, you know, and and everything was handheld. So um, we had that strict guideline, and we did that for so many years up until recently, where you know the guy that we work with now, Dan, has has, has really brought along so many different thoughts and ideas, and and morphed that vision into this 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 vision we had. So we're constantly changing and evolving, and like bringing new things to the table and trying new things. And you know, at the beginning, I was really stubborn about that vision. I wanted to keep it consistent, but but you know, as you kind of let your guard down and you open up yourself to other you know collaboration. Um, you see that like there, there's better ways of doing things than, than your own sometimes. And, and, and that, it, that collaboration is what I really encourage now. And I try to like, you know, Luke, what he brings to the table is, is art. You know, everybody's bringing something, you know, some, some skill, some art to the table. And I just want to make sure that they can, they can flourish, you know, in this. So um, just like those beautiful beans that you get, uh, you, you just, you know, there, there's a process, but there's also, um, there, there's a little bit of chaos there, a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of art to what you do. It's not all strictly process because if yeah, it wasn't, yeah. it would just be, you know, just traditional Folgers coffee. No offense to Folgers. I'm sure it's great coffee, right? But, um, <laughs> well, uh, if you're watching this, we, we are, we, you know, if you want to sponsor Wisconsin foodie, uh, we're, we're... <laughs> no, we're not going to get sponsored by Folgers. I think that's an, actually a super astute question, Jared, and I really appreciate it. Um, I want to say from like my perspective uh, in the conversation, uh, I think number one, like finding ways to reframe the Wisconsin identity is like what I set out every single time we turn those cameras on or we do a live stream like this. I really hope that people can find something that resonates with them. If it's the fact that like three people from very different and unique backgrounds in Wisconsin are sitting down and having this collective conversation um, about a program that we make that involves food and it involves culture and it involves like stories of rebirth and rejuvenation, um, being that all three of us left the Midwest or left Wisconsin for a period of time and then came back um, with their subsequent families and like we choose this place. Why is it that we choose this place? How can that knowledge that we hold on to propel people in the future to continue to choose this place as like the place of priority? I think that refining that message and diversifying that message and finding voices like yours that, I mean, I, I don't think I'm telling any tales out of school here when I say that your coffee can hold up in any cupping on the planet. And some of that is the farmer's story. Some of that is your roasting process. Some of that is you being able to translate that story for people. And some of it is just the fact that it's like the most exceptional coffee that you're sourcing. But I think like having you specifically and the people at Ruby Coffee to point to and say like, hey, we uphold the highest principles and food standards in the world. And we are right here in Stevens Point. Finding stories like that to help us better articulate this vision for who we are and why we do what we do uh, acts as a vehicle for growth to our future. And that's really what I'm excited about continuing to capture are these stories of us as a, as a place like flexing and becoming stronger and more resolute in the fact that we do have a story to share and this is not flyover country. And if it takes, uh, you know, if it takes me to, to introduce people to that, great. But I, I rarely, if ever, feel like I'm the star of the show. I think nine times out of 10, it's gonna be the food product that we're featuring, or it's gonna be the, the guests that we bring on to like really lift people up and creating that opportunity basis. So uh, thanks for that question. That's that's really astute. You're a smart lady. That's great answers. <laughs> Great answers. I mean, yeah. I want people to, you know, obviously you've got, I want to, I want to reiterate that the coffee that was on the show is available now and it's not always available. Um, so if you're interested, make sure I threw up the website on, on this, make sure to reach out I as soon as you can and, and snatch up that coffee. It's special. Um, where, where else can people find Ruby? Like, are you guys doing retail right now? Um, are you in any, like, are you in Whole Foods? Are you in, you know, where, where can people find you outside of Ruby Coffee Cafe? Yeah, it depends where they are in the in the state or in the country. Um, but we we have a pretty broad wholesale network. So if you happen to be, um, you know, in a big city somewhere, we have customers in New York City, Miami, um, Chicago, 
in Milwaukee, we work with Sendix. We work with um, a couple of cafes. We, um, yeah, Madison, we have customers in Madison. There's, there's a variety. Um, Bradbury's uh, was one that I saw that popped up in the show. We do sort of a special blend for Bradbury's there in downtown Madison. And um, they were, you know, that's, a, that's, that's like as a tangent, that's kind of a cool story there to be able to, I went to school in Madison. They haven't really put Bradbury's on the on the show. Um, you know, I, they, they've always been on the list. Uh, they've only, always been on a short list of mine. And I just, um, you know, I think maybe we passed by there. Like, I feel like they've always been a place that I've wanted to do. And I, and I you know, they've always been on a short list of ours. So Bradbury's, if you're watching, right. you're, we're thinking about you. You're, we see you, okay? We see you. So yeah, they, they have our coffee. Um, yeah, if, if you live somewhere and they don't have Ruby coffee, tell them that you want it. And I mean, that that's that's helpful to us. That's important to us. But then you can also, of course, order online. We we ship pretty much every day. North Carolina. That's a good question. I don't remember off the top of my head. But if you send us an email, Ruby at Ruby Coffee Roasters is our uh, customer support email. We can we can figure out where you're at and find uh, the local customer there but um right here, this is uh this is uh, yeah. a little see this is my mom right here this is monique is <laughs> oh, really? my mom she yes yeah, so so if you see something coming from monique you know thanks monique, monique. she's getting the good stuff <laughs> oh that's great i love uh, that mom a lot what other there. questions did we get any other questions that we should yeah. So, any if you guys are watching right now, well, we did get a question. Cheryl, uh, Cheryl Kuhn asked uh, if if Luke and, and I are well to, or ill today. And um, you know, uh, Cheryl, you know, we we spent the last couple of days together, just you know, really brainstorming the next couple, like the next couple, the next year, the next couple of years of Wisconsin foodie. And um, I, I want to say that it's just been mentally, you know, kind of draining, but also really, you know, refreshing. We spent a lot of time outside uh, with with. The, dogs and um you know we just so we, we've spent a lot of time you know just kind of chit-chatting so I, I think we're all just tired it's you know we all i crashed on the couch for the last couple of days with a pack of dogs that were constantly jumping on me or licking my ear or you know yeah so we're, we're all a little exhausted and i just got out of a car coming ha home from Barocqua. so um ill no not quite but uh but you know, uh, but but I think you know just just a little um just a little exhausted but that's all right we're we're, we're pushing through here we've got we are dedicated to doing this show um, and we're going to stick, stick with it no matter what. So even though I had to go hundred <laughs> miles on the freeway and we got here in time. Oh, you would have driven hundred miles on the freeway anyway, if you didn't have any uh, little known fact, Arthur Ersink is maybe the scariest man in Milwaukee to ride around the city with. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of the Milwaukee slide, uh, which is when you get into the turn lane and then like get in front of the traffic, not that Arthur would ever do this, but uh, I will tell you, it is a harrowing and fun experience to be a passenger in the car. It's, it's nonstop action. So uh, if you have any uh, suggestions for driving destinations for Arthur and the Wisconsin Foodie crew, and you want to see us roll through town, please hit us up in the chat. Let us know. Shoot us an email. Um, and Arthur will be super excited to drive around and terrorize your pedestrians. At least my vehicle doesn't have the logo like tattooed on the side of it. You know, so if you see Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Foodie van driving, it is 99% chance that Luke, the host of Wisconsin Foodie, is driving somewhere around Wisconsin. And, and when we're all together, um, people, you know, people, people come out, they pay attention. They'll stop and wave. They'll, they'll follow us to wherever we go. Um, yep. They'll follow Luke into the bathroom sometimes. It's, you know, it's <laughs> a little Two weird. weeks ago. <laughs> It's get a little, a little personal. <laughs> it's it's always so much fun to talk to people, you know, that come up. Like it's just it's just you know we spend a lot of time uh, spend a lot of time behind the scenes, like you know making the show, shooting the show, editing the show. But to interact with the people that watch the show and love the show is is always so much fun. So, Jared, I hope you got a lot of really um, fantastic attention from the show. I hope you, people reach out and I hope people want to interact with you. I mean, our really our goal is to put you on a pedestal, man. Let's put a spotlight on you and and to and to to make you a celebrity so you know um so you can do your thing a little bit easier and you you know we it's just we help you market your 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 product and and we hope people well, thank you attention yeah, it's, it's awesome i think you know for me i also just want to shout out my whole team because um you know i get i have the luxury of 
oh, you know, building this thing and being the one that um, that does get a lot of the attention. And that's that's cool. I appreciate it. Um, it's I, I realize how meaningful that is and how good it is for, for the brand and, and the company. And then how that also has the you know trickle down sort of effect on the rest of the team um, as we grow and are successful. But also like they are the ones that are you know, weighing coffees and roasting coffees. And we have a wonderful team, both here. I'm in Nelsonville right now. And uh, we have our HQ staff here that does all the production and shipment. And, you know, we ship out every day. So, well, pretty much every day, most, most every day, Monday through Friday. And so they're, they're really hard workers and the cafe staff, I mean, um, they, yeah, they love this stuff. So it's awesome. I really appreciate it. Yes, please pass our thanks along to them. Uh, thank them for allowing us to come into their space and document their passion and hard work uh, that they put into it. And, uh, you know, we really appreciate everything that you do and your staff does to keep this place on the map and vibrant. So yeah. thank you so much for that, man. Yeah, and also, you know, I put you down in your title, your credits as co-founder. Um, who is the other, who's the other founder? Is that your wife or is that My wife. your wife's yeah. the other founder? So. I always feel really guilty when we don't give, you know, give the other folks like that a spotlight. And I felt guilty. She didn't have more of a presence on the show. Like I wish we would have gotten more shots with her in the parking lot. Cause I know we hung out for a little while and, and, you know, as well as your kids, I think we did get a shot of maybe your daughter. No, maybe not. I don't know. But you know, I always feel bad when we don't get the whole, the whole story a little bit. And, and you got I, one of them, I think in the, in the other episode at the, oh, yeah. um, at the farm, which is almost worse because then the other kid is like, <laughs> yeah, who am I? Huh? Yeah. Where's my spot? How so come sure that, hey, well, next time we're in the area, we'll tell you and you guys can come by and pop in and do a cameo. We'll get everybody. Yeah, yeah exactly. But we, I mean, Stephen's point has been an area that we, um, that we, we've profiled like probably in the past, you know, several times in the past little while. And, and we hope that Stephen's point is feeling the same love from us, um, from the, from the community, because there's some cool, cool things happening there. And, um, mm -hmm. and we, we love coming back. We love visiting. So Steven's point, if we haven't told all the stories yet, you know, send, send your stories our way. I mean, I think we've gotten a lot of really great ones, but I mean, shockingly enough, there's always stories that, that we don't know about, we haven't heard about, and, uh, we, we'd love to hear some of those. One quick thing I was talking to, I ran into, um, the old, the former manager of Father Fats yesterday or two days ago, yeah. and they were just talking about how how much it meant to them too after your, you know when you guys did that feature with Chef C and stuff. Sure. Um, so for everybody that doesn't know, being on Wisconsin Foodie is a big deal and it matters and it has a big impact on on your business. So it's awesome. awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. That's awesome. That's great to hear. <laughs> Uh, Jared, thank you so much, man. I know this won't, uh, I know we'll, we'll, we'll hear from you. We'll see you soon. And, uh, let's, uh, we're trying to do some cool things. So, so a little bit of a secret is Luke is, uh, has this, uh, secret dining club happening maybe sometime in the future at, on, on, uh, the, at the owl farm. Um, so I think it'd be really cool to have you out there at some point and, uh, to, to be doing something out there. So maybe we'll see you a little sooner than, than we expect, but, uh, really Really appreciate your time, Jared. Let's keep in touch. Anything cool comes up, you uh, send us an email. So thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thanks, Jared. Big love. All right, um, Amy, I know I can see Amy. Oh, there they are. Okay, so next up, I see them in my queue. So I got a special little side on my, my screen here where I can see people in the queue here. I don't know if you can see that, Luke. Maybe not. I can't, nope. I can't, okay. I feel so powerful. I can turn people on and off. Like I could just turn you off. <laughs> And turn you back oh, on. Oh man! I mean, just, okay. If any of you have any uh, suggestions for segues for Arthur as we do these things, please feel free. Add them into the chats. I thought that the the first one was really good. How you went from the quick trip to the hot water to the tea. yeah man. Actually, they you have know. the coffee, but it's not the best coffee. Speaking of the best coffee, we have Jared well, Litzmeyer. You, you I mean, know, I mean, you know where I was going with that steak rubbed with coffee, and like you know, I was trying to fit in some steak a little earlier on, and I caught uh, it. I caught it. You know, next up, okay, so before we bring, hold on, hold on, my phone. That's your phone. Yep, sorry, world. Um, you know, <laughs> before we, we, we bring our, our, our next guests on, I, I really want to talk about this, this episode. 
Um, this episode was kind of, uh, you know, it, it was two separate pieces that found that married themselves, that, that got together, that, that hooked up and connected. Um, because uh, this season, we, the stories we're telling are just so big and so, so bold, and we want to let these stories unfold. And sometimes it can be hard to fit everything into one episode the way we put it together. So, for instance, um, you know, the, with Ruby Coffee, Ruby Coffee was going to be a part of the first episode of the season when we went to um, White Feather Organics and we did Siren Shrub. We were also going to put um, Ruby Coffee was going to be a part of that episode. And when we started editing, we just knew that um, it, that wasn't going to work because we'd have to. It would take away from some of the other stories. So we 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 unfortunately we had to take Ruby out of that, you know, which would have been great because Jared's there at the dinner at the you know eating pizza at the end. There's the the whole connection with everybody that was going to be on the episode was going to be at the the pizza place at the end, but um, we couldn't fit it in. And that happens a lot, you know, where we feel we're on the right path, but we we discover a different story that has a different connection. So we had to take Ruby out. And this next segment, Delbar, was going to be a part of the Aldo Leopold story. Um, the story where you go, where we go fishing at uh, Mir Lake, not to be confused with Crystal Lake and uh, Jason Voorhees, but Mir Lake. Um, and, then, uh, and then the Aldo Leopold shack, we were going to leave the shack and go to Delbar. And once we started editing that episode, we knew it needed to be about Leopold and that really needed to be the focus. So, um, you know, so fast forward, we had this incredible, um, this incredible segment featuring the Del Bar. And, you know, it's a story that I've always, you know, whenever we're in the area, we drive past, the architecture is always so incredible to me. Incredible to me. And I love that about a lot of these Wisconsin supper clubs or, or restaurants that, that are a little bit more generational, um, the unique architecture. And this one really stands out. I mean, so, and I, and, and you know, I visited here and there back in the day, but I think I really wanted to explore it now. And it's it's something we were able to do. And uh, it did not disappoint. I mean, that that uh, the Del Bar for me was like, on one hand, we had the Aldo Leopold episode, but the Del Bar was so big and special and it felt like it needed to be on its own as well. So um, so what happened is we married two episodes together in Ruby Coffee and, and Del Bar. But I think those two really fit well together. They're these uh, both indulgent sort of, you know, indulgent things and places and, and experiences. Both of them are experiences and both of them also bring together incredible hospitality. I mean, just, mm -hmm. just the, the best, the best hospitality you could imagine. And, and, um, you know, just talking to Amy, who is, who is the newest, the newest owner, um, the newest generation and her sister, um, and, and their travels to come to the Del Bar and come back to Wisconsin, to leave Wisconsin, to come back to Wisconsin, to run, uh, to run the, uh, the Del Bar. I mean, it's such an incredible story. And, and, um, and, and I'm just, you know, I'm in love with this place. I think out of, out of, you know, if there was a top five restaurants that I could go to for one last time, Del Bar would, would be extremely high on that list. And, and that's not to disparage other, um, other restaurants. I love everybody's restaurant, <laughs> but, yeah, um, no, but this one's special, I, I right? Think, totally. I mean, the thing that like, I even wrote about it in the blog this week, like it's unfailingly consistent. Um, I've never been there and had a less than spectacular experience. Uh, the hospitality is always on point. The food is always on point. Uh, the decor and the, and the space itself is always well maintained, uh, clean, which is awesome. But, um, you know, I, I think that the thing that kind of these two actually bring together now that I'm thinking about it, Arthur, is like uh, the ability to reframe what sometimes can be passed over as like a thing of the the historic past right like coffee we've all a lot of us have grown up drinking coffee you know you can look at it like you had mentioned Folgers earlier um or you know you just drink coffee it's a thing that you start your day with whatever it doesn't have to be this occasion but there are people who actually elevate that like jared and his crew at ruby yeah. um and that's kind of what i feel about amy and and the spectacular folks at del bar yeah. They take this iconic Wisconsin Supper Club experience and they've elevated it to this standard of care and love and uh, consistency that is just unmatched. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I mean that with every fiber of my being. You're not going to go there and leave disappointed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an experience. It's the most quintessential Wisconsin experience. That bar table um, that, that we had uh, Amy sitting at for her interview is probably that's the prime time spot right there you know you want to get there you want to get there early and you want to sit there all night <laughs> and you yeah, want to watch yeah. watch the game have a couple uh, old fashions 
And, um, you know, anyways, we're going on and on, but we should, we should uh, invite our guests here. Uh, Let's bring Amy in. Amy, in, Amy, Amy Wimmer and Ann Stoken from the Dell Bar. Yeah. Amy and Ann, welcome to Hi Wisconsin. Hi, friends. How you doing? How are you? Great. Doing great. How are you guys? Oh, we're doing, we're doing great now that you're here. And now I'm thinking about the Dell Bar again. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm looking at Luke and he's frozen. Have you not moved uh, in like the last 10 minutes? No, nope, he's, he's good. Am I moving now? I see him. No. It might be. Like, Just roll with it. Okay? You're hugging a pillow. Frozen. <laughs> Am I? It's, <laughs> it's I think because it's I'm both. hungry. I think it's your internet because I see him. I see him. Okay, perfectly. got it. So just, All right. Just, just roll good. with it. All right. Just All roll right. with it. We'll be good. <laughs> hey, um, I, I had, um, it, it's so good to see both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. I had a lady reach out this morning, uh, or actually she didn't reach out. She put it on her Instagram post that she was going to go to the Dell bar and actually ask for the Luke Zom. Uh, by name, uh, which <laughs> is like the bone-in filet rare with the hash browns and uh, the mushrooms and uh, the uh, marrow butter. Um, I just want to know if there's like any sort of like proprietary kickback I get from that, or is it just like the ability to call you up and be like, hey, Amy, I need a table. <laughs> just, just watch for the checks in the mail. Every time somebody yeah, okay, orders, cool. I'm awesome. just going to send you some money. Awesome. I'm send you a penny. That a penny. Yeah. <laughs> How many of those dishes are sold on a, on a Saturday night? Oh, on a Saturday night, just steaks in general are, I mean, over 300 steaks on a Saturday night. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Consistently. So crazy. We are cooking. We just actually added another broiler because um, it's tough to keep up on a Saturday night. So yeah, your, your yes. chef Matt was uh, unsung. Mike. Mike. Mike sorry. Yeah. My, Matt, Mike, I'm sorry about that. Well, I really Matt, Matt and Mike, they're brothers. They both worked yeah. here for almost yeah. 30 years. So yeah, really? so they're both in the kitchen. So, uh, but that is like that is a, such a he's. I mean, just this underrated what he does and what that kitchen does. I mean, it is unreal. Walking into that kitchen, it's 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 fairly modern. I mean, the kitchen is beautiful. It's a giant kitchen, um, and the steaks and just the artistry of making those steaks and flipping those steaks and getting those steaks out consistently. That is, oh, that is a true, true, true art. So yeah, that was a lot we have of, got a lot of fun yeah, to watch. Our staff is incredible. Our kitchen staff is incredible. We're very, very fortunate to have them. Um, yeah. Long, long mm -hmm. ten years with them all combined. I mean, there's chefs that have worked here for, you know, fifteen years, twenty years, twenty five, thirty. So mm -hmm. we are really lucky to have the team that we have. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. That, so how is how has the winter been? Friends, has it been uh, okay? You know, like, are, are you like still foot on the gas? Go, go, go. I know when we filmed this in the summertime and the subsequent times that I've been back since we filmed, it's always just like bursting at the seams in the Del Bar. Are you yeah. still at that capacity? Is it still running? It is. Yeah. yeah we're very busy. Yeah. Very busy we're very place. fortunate. Very fortunate to be located in the town we are. And, um, you know, when we left the Dells 23 years ago, it really, you know, back then it was you you switch the lights off on Labor Day or um, yeah, on Labor Day and turn them back on on Memorial Day. And it's really become um, a year round business here. I mean, the conventions are back. Um, both the Kalahari and the Wilderness Hotels are hosting pretty large conventions. So um, those are back. Our weeknights in January are very steady and consistent. So we're just really thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, since great. we left, you, I think you guys were here in June, and it's been, you know, ever it's been a, a, a big year for us. We have not slowed down at all. Yeah, well, we that's hope awesome. We just made it. Uh, hopefully, we didn't just destroy that then, because you know, <laughs> yeah. you at no. stake. I mean, they're going to be flocking. You guys are going to be slammed. I, I guarantee yeah. you, you guys are going to be slammed, and people yeah. wanting to eat steak with yeah. uh, with all of that. You know that because yeah. that was. No. Woo, that looked amazing. That made me so hungry. So, so we were out, you know, I mean, we were out last night at, uh, you know, we all got together to, to go to the Driftless Cafe and, and mm -hmm. watch the episode at the Driftless Cafe, which was, which was a ton of fun. And we enjoyed being there. We enjoyed meeting all the fans that were there too, that stopped by to say hi. Um, and, you know, we all got burgers, but, you know, Luke got a steak. He did not even, it was burger night, you know? So we were like, we thought we had to eat burgers. But I think Luke and that steak, he was just reminiscing about it. And he had to eat the steak, but I, he was just, you know, he was kind of shaking his head the whole time because I don't think it was the experience that he had. 
And he was just watching the show and just eating these bites of steak. And he's like, no, he's shaking his head. So, yeah, um, I, yeah no, uh, I, and that is not a call out to my staff. My staff is incredible too. <laughs> you you staff. and I both know that like, uh, you know, to, to do this consistently day in, day out. Uh, but, you know, the, the Del Bar for me has always been this, uh, this destination, right? It's, it's a restaurant that like, I think it's so underappreciated because like I was telling Arthur before we brought you on, you know, separate club culture is quintessential Wisconsin culture. It's something that's ours a little bit. And um, you two have taken this, this thing that's been an institution since the 1940s in the Dells and like elevated it to the next level. Um, how did that process and that change happen for both of you? I mean, because understandably you, you left for a while and came home. But right. What has that been like? Well, I think, you know, our, from our grandparents, they've always focused on quality. Um, and so we've always, you know, went out and found the best product and, um, basically our dad and his wife for, you know, the last 35, 40 years, they are, you know, experts on food and sourcing and, you know, they do a ton of R and D and, and, and we do too, as far as going out to different restaurants and, you know, finding the best fish and finding the best, best steaks. And, um, we are very focused on quality. Um, as far as us coming back, you know, maybe we, I, refresh the space yeah, a little refresh bit. Refresh the space. Um, um, I think you know, we we brought in some uh, like younger servers up front and hostesses up front, and I think really changed the dynamic of even how like the front desk operation works, which is so critical to a restaurant operation. So um, you know, we brought in more technology. I think things were just are running a little bit more smoother. We probably can seat, um, you know, 20% more than maybe they did before just because of technology and turn times and just managing that better. Um, so, you know, I just think a refresh there, um, you know, because of COVID, you know, again, we benefited with like our Madison area crowd because a lot of the restaurants there had much uh, stronger restrictions and people, um, you know, we're looking to maybe get out, take a drive, hit up the Dell Bar. So I think just the timing of all of that, we really have started to become a lot well more well more known to like the Madison crowd um, and beyond, even just the surrounding areas too. So and we also kind of stepped up our advertising, and yeah. um, we've been honored, you know, by uh, we've been um, nominated by Madison Magazine. This is our second year in a row in three categories. So. Mm -hmm. We're excited That's about cool. that. Um, so we're we're in the voting stage right now for best supper club, steakhouse, and destination restaurant. So I think that puts us a little bit more on the radar. Um, people, can again, people reach out and vote? Is it like a people's uh, yeah. people's vote? Mm -hmm. or, yeah, yeah, it's oh, on okay. So when you're done watching this, you could pause this right now if you're not watching. Go <laughs> yeah. to Madison, madisonmagazine.com. Find yep. where you can go for Del Bar and try to do it as many times as possible because that they- great. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's been huge. Yeah, so yeah. that's been huge, and and like I said, we've had a we've we've had. If you look at all the supper clubs, and I'm I don't want to put anyone down because we have great supper clubs in the state, but it's hard to find a, a supper club that serves only prime grade steaks. It's almost yeah. pretty impossible to find a supper club that even does one or two. Um, so I think that that kind of sets us apart um, as kind of like a higher quality, as you were saying on the steaks. Um, but we just continue to try to, our staff is unbelievable. We've got, I think the best staff right now that we've ever had and, um, you know, just great bartenders and great servers and hosts and the, the, the kitchen is just great right now. So all of that's going really well. Um, so we, you hope know, that when that things are going really well like that, do you feel like it's time to start maybe looking at more restaurants and opening more places? <laughs> Or do, yeah, you just, maybe. or do you just focus on the thing in front of you? What Do you know anything about that or what? Oh, what yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> we've just bought a pancake house um, yeah. just as of today. Is official. Thank Whoa. you. Yeah. Today? Today yeah. is official. Yeah. Um, Holy smokes. Congrats. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. It's a little breakfast joint. It's been uh, run by the Thompson family for 60 years. And um, family friends of ours reached out to us and, and asked if we'd have any interest. And honestly, it wasn't even on our radar. 
Um, but it's just right down the road and they're only open from seven to one or we're only open from seven to one. Um, and we've got a lot of staff that, uh, which is unbelievable to me, but they work two jobs. A lot of our chefs are working morning jobs and then they come here straight from the other job and work at night. Um, same for our serving staff. Uh, so it just made a lot of sense to kind of bring them under one corporation and, you know, they can benefit from that in lots of ways. Um, so here we are into a pancake house. Yeah. Yes. Do you know, so you know the pancake. name? Are you going to keep the name of the, uh, yes. the, so yep, what would be it's going to be, it's, it's the same. It's Mr. Pancake. Mr. Pancake. Well, I cannot, yeah. so this summer, I can't wait. I like, you know, kids get excited to go to, you know, the different water parks and uh, the, the arcades and the wax museums and the haunted houses. Well, that's what I used to be excited about. I don't know if they're excited about that. Anymore, yep. but yeah. Wax museums, <laughs> they are. House, that's, wow. but now at this stage in life, uh, that like going to the Dell bar is kind of like going to the water park for me. You know, I just right. get so <laughs> giddy and excited and it's like, is it Friday yet? You know, can I, you know, so. Uh, very excited to come up there and knowing that we can start with breakfast at Mr. Pancake yes. and end with uh, steaks is um, it's like a dream come true. You might yeah. need to keep, you might need to skip lunch. Yeah. All right, so, <laughs> yes. uh, I will. I refuse. Uh, one of our one of our biggest fans here, Mr. Jim. Uh, Jim is, asks the question if he uh, can. He wants to order the Luke. He wants to come make reservations. He wants to know if he has to make reservations, what the process is. He's got a two hour drive, but he really wants to come on there and, and order yes. the Luke. How would you, Definitely. what would you recommend? How, how, how should Jim play this? Just go on website and book reservations. Um, Delbar.com, Del-Bar.com or call us um, here at the restaurant. We usually have somebody here all day answering phones. Um, so yes, definitely recommend reservations. Sweet. And you're going to have to jot that down somewhere, the loop, because you probably are going to have a couple of people asking for the loop. So you might you better jot that down now, or you're going to be watching Wisconsin Booty on YouTube and Rewind just to, yep. you know, just to what you <laughs> put together. Yeah, you guys, you guys were all, watching the yeah. show, by the way, was so much fun. You guys did. Yeah, that. You guys we left out so much. Too. There's so much more to the story. And that's the hardest part is, is you know, as being kind of what we do, it's like, um, you know, it's never done. It's only the project is only abandoned. That's what that's what we have to do at a certain point as editors is, is we're never finished telling the story. And we always think we can do a better job of telling your story. But you know, we always have to just end it at some point and mm -hmm. but and, and fit sort of a timeline and but but your story is so so big, and there's so much more. And I feel like bad that we didn't get both of you doing more together. You know, I mean, so hopefully you're not fighting behind the scenes about it. We you know, do. we fight all the time. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. No, we make a really good yeah. team and focus yeah. is like on the back end and um, of the restaurant. And then I'm in front of the house and we recently just promoted an assistant GM, um, Kevin, who's been with us for, I think, nine years as our bar manager. Um, so that's been really, that's happened in the last couple of weeks. So, um, but yeah, we work very well together. Yeah. That's yeah. great. And we got, a, we got a comment from Jennifer. She she loves the show, show and she made a reservation for tomorrow oh, night. Thank That's awesome. Yeah, thank thank you, you, Jennifer. We'll look forward yes. to seeing you. Yeah, our phones cool. have been active this morning and definitely have had a few new reservations because of the show. So we feel Good. so fortunate that you yep. guys scheduled this with us. It's just amazing. And you did such a beautiful job showcasing our restaurant. We really appreciate it. It looked great. Definitely. Thank you very easy when you have subjects like you, a story like yours, food like yours, and a space like yours, it makes our job very, very easy. So, a slam so we wish there was more of that, more of that out there like that. And I want, if you're watching this and you go in there, make sure that you say you saw Wisconsin, you saw this on Wisconsin Booty and you're there because of Wisconsin Booty. Yes, definitely. We love, we love when that happens. We love talking to you guys like a year from now and you're going to be like, Oh my God, I wouldn't, I couldn't have known how many people would have called and saw us on Wisconsin Booty. It's going to happen. <laughs> And okay. uh, so, but uh, but I would I'm, say, uh, of all the restaurants in Wisconsin that maybe don't need that shot in the arm, the Del Bar is hard to get into anyway because you guys are doing such a great job. And uh, now it might get a little harder, so please make your reservations now, yes. make them in advance, put them out yeah. on their uh, on their system so that way they know you're coming. And uh, you know, if you want to drop that you saw it on Wisconsin Foodie, we always appreciate that. I think Excellent. everybody does. When you participate in the process, it's really it's really fun. Um, I can say that uh, it may get a little weird for you. I don't know. I had I had a couple of people follow me as Arthur indicated earlier in the segment uh, into like a quick trip bathroom to talk to me about Ooh. their their show ideas. <laughs> yeah. 
which is a little bit, uh, you know, unnerving to say the yeah. least, but it, it's fine. You, you get over it after a little while. Yeah. That wasn't in the uh, form that we signed uh, yeah. to be. No. Uh, I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> uh, you can blame Arthur, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, well, that is fantastic, guys. And I know you guys are, are super busy and we really appreciate, appreciate your time. You know that we're going to be in there. We actually just did this episode so we could get easier reservations to get in the oh, bell bar. So anytime that, you guys want. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, the, the thing you. is, I think when we were in there eating, um, I think there was like the whole team of Culver's was in the other room. You know, we wanted oh, like, yeah. I, think, I think Craig Culver was right next to us in the other room eating. And we wanted to like, wouldn't that be great if we could pull him on over and do uh, have, have Craig Culver be part of the show? But no. oh, he, he would love, love to. He, he would love to. Yeah. Hey, he, he's it's been, all about you guys, all right? I don't want, I don't want, I don't want Craig stealing any of your thunder, okay? It's, oh, it's all, he's great. They've been coming here. His parents, I remember as a kid, they would come in. Um, Irene, oh, I don't want to say the names because I think I'm wrong. I wish I could say that. Um, I don't think Craig's watching. I can't remember the names, but anyway, he they used to come in here, and um, you know, Craig is and some publications called out the Del Bar as his top favorite restaurant in the world. So yep. he's in here quite a bit, probably a couple times a month. Yeah, so we I'm love sure the stories of the connections you have, the stories you have with the people that have come into that restaurant, come you know that you've seen grow over the years. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I would love to sit down and continue this conversation because this could go on forever. But um, definitely, I really we really appreciate it, guys. I know you've got a pancake business to get back to. I know you've got a steak yep. to get back to, and. Uh, and uh, we, we really appreciate everything. Now you've got to go figure out what the Luke is. You're going to get so many calls. Yeah. And, I know. Uh, <laughs> make it like a left yeah. hook in the dark. <laughs> you shut off the I'm lights and then go, whack. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go program the Luke into the point of sale system right now. Yep. Awesome. You guys are very, Great. very good at what you do. You're smart people. And, and I know you're going to nail this thing. So thank um, you, guys. Thank you, thank you so much. And we will get together for dinner sometime soon at the Driftless. It's something we've yes. been trying to do. And, uh, and yep. I can't wait. You know, it's going to be a lot of fun. You, there. you guys yeah. are first class and yeah. we appreciate everything you've done. And thank and you. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, you so much. Ladies. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Right. Have a great weekend. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay. You too. Bye. There you have it, Luke. Um, there you have it. Yep. Pretty special people, right? I mean, we're just, just, just like a blessing that we get to hang out with these people and meet these people and tell these stories. Um, it's fantastic. I, I just, I, you know, I got to pinch myself sometimes. I got to shave. That's oh, what I got first. I'm going to shave. I'm not going to pinch myself. I got to go shave. But uh, yeah, clean yourself you know. up there, Ursink. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I do want to jump back one second. You know, we started this whole thing by like acknowledging members of the team. And somehow, um, and, and I'm, I'm not being prompted to do this. So like, I don't want to, but like, I think it's really important also to acknowledge Ruthie and her uh, impetus on this organization. So Ruthie is uh, my wife. She's also my business partner in the Driftless Cafe. She is also one of the producers for this thing. Like she makes it rain. Uh, sister has got the gift of, um, you know, big, big pitta energy, which means that you give her a task. It doesn't matter how impossible it seems. And like, she's going to knock it down. And I think that like all these members, when we talk to these businesses are so quick to like point to the people in their organization that make it possible for them to, to achieve this level of success. And man, oh man, um, I think the thing that all of our organizations have in common is you get strong players, you get powerful players, but then like being able to lift each other up is so important. And I think that, you know, I'm walking away from this conversation today feeling super inspired by the people that we surround ourselves with, Arthur. But like the fact that we get to document and capture these stories and share them with the world, like what an amazing and awesome responsibility. Yeah. And uh, I am so excited that we have the crew that we have to tell these stories. I am so excited that we have the entrepreneurs and the, you know, the producers to be able to lift up. And I'm so excited to be able to call this place home. And everywhere we go, we are met with love and care and kindness. And people just want to put their best selves out there for us to capture and share with the world. It's yeah. truly a dream. Man, I, uh, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Ruthie is a beautiful thing. Um, <laughs> I think I spent more yes, time with is. Ruthie the last couple of days than I did with you, Luke. But um, yeah. Ruthie, is, Ruthie is an incredible human. She, you know, she is, is definitely um, a very, very big key to the cog, um, the Wisconsin foodie machine here. Without her, 
Um, it, it's really when, when Luke came on as the new host, I really just wanted Ruthie and I had to bring Luke along, you know, and I had to find a place for, for Luke and, you know, we just had to put him in front of the camera. But, but Ruthie is an incredible human and everybody needs somebody like Ruthie on their team. And, and I, and I, we value, we value her. We value Nelson. We value Dan Peters. We value, um, you know, we value so many people, uh, our underwriters, uh, you guys, I mean, we do this for you. We do this for the people that watch the show that support these businesses. This is a movement. This is, this is a movement of, 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 of thinking, um, you know, thinking with your dollars, shopping, shopping smart, you know, shopping local, supporting good people, supporting the people that need to be supported. It's easy to go into the grocery store and pick random items and, and make that dinner. It's much harder to go to uh, source certain products, but um, we try to give you the, the inside tips every week on, on the cool stories and the people that you should be supporting because every time you support somebody like Ruby Coffee or Del Bar, that money is going back into their economy. And, and it's helping mm -hmm. these small towns uh, grow and succeed. And what we are trying to do is make sure that here locally, we're trying to support our community. We're trying to support the people that are doing it here um, and doing it so good that um, that it, it, it's mind blowing sometimes, the talent that we have in our own backyard. And some of these times, these people don't have the time to market themselves. They don't have the time to promote themselves. They're kind of on an island just making these incredible products and then we get to swoop in and tell these stories and, and introduce these people to the world. We just, um, you know, we're doing our part. Your part is to support these people, to buy their products, to go to go support them. Look at our underwriters. You guys want to support people? That That's who you got to support right then and there because those those folks are the folks that, that let us tell all these fantastic stories of all these small farmers, coffee makers, you know, and, and let us do what they do. So it's a cycle. We need you. You need us. They need. They need us. They need you. We all need each other, and we're all here to support each other. We all love each other. Luke, I love you. Thank you so much. I love uh, you too. Thank you. Do you have any end words for our our, um, our fifteen viewers right now? No, just keep being beautiful. Get outside. Drink in some of this sunshine. Know that we're going to be coming at you next week, same time, same channel, same place. Uh, we've got a few more bangers to drop, and uh, this next season is going to be epic. I, uh, I have no doubt about that. So uh, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for tuning in. We love you. We appreciate you. We see you. Um, and go be amazing humans. Yep. I agree with all of that. Um, we did not show the tra trailer for next week's episode today. Um, unfortunately, just because I was in the car all morning coming from Barocco to here. <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, next week is the story about Wegu. Wegu in Wisconsin. Wegu. Wagyu, Ta uh, Chef Talbot Rare is a guest, is is on the show, and he has the best way of saying Wagyu. You'll see it next week. It's pretty. Uh, I, I try to copy him, and it's just uh, he does it so well. Um, but we also we also have the the draft uh, Nathan and Carrie draft the draft brothers who are doing fantastic fantastic things with Wagyu farming here in Wisconsin. They have Wagyu genetics, hundred percent Wagyu genetics here in Wisconsin. Um, fantastic fantastic guys. Um, trying to find quintessential Wisconsin, trying to find a way out of dairy and got there, got somehow into Wagyu, you know, so you will, uh, you'll hear that story next week. You'll also, the funniest part about this whole episode was Luke, that you really didn't have much um, interaction with Wagyu before the show. You didn't cook it very often. You, I don't know if you even tried, you even ate it, but uh, this is I your, like, this is the door, the opening for you and Wagyu. It, now you it only was, eat Wagyu. It's crazy. That's all you eat. It's, it's, it's in your no, contract with Wisconsin true. Foodie. You only eat Wagyu. Exactly. On shoots, I must have only green Skittles and only Wagyu beef. Um, from Wisconsin, of course. Uh, yeah, no, it uh, it was definitely one of those ingredients for me that is, um, I mean, it was really eye-opening. It was beautiful. It's just beautiful. Tune in and see, all right? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Uh, have a great weekend, Luke. We'll talk to you. We'll see you, you soon.